What a day that will be. If you know the words that song, that's a good song too. If you have a Bible, Acts chapter 26 today. Acts chapter 26. Paul is before King Agrippa. He's giving his testimony, telling how he came to know the Lord. Uh, the next chapter, he's on his way to Rome. He's a prisoner. And uh, there's some great lessons here, and we'll just begin reading. Oh, let's see, verse 17, God says, I send thee, and verse 18, we'll start reading there. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Acts 26, verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto the, them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do work meet for repentance. For this cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Boy, he's got a real history of persecution and sacrifice for the Lord. Having therefore obtained the help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to the small and to the great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and, show, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. What I want to focus on today in verse 23, all that Paul went through, all the, the persecution, all the suffering, all of the hardships, he said there that God helped him. It was the help of God that got him through all of that. And I got to thinking about that this week, and, and sometimes we don't understand what the help of God is or how to obtain it. And so that's what I want to speak on today. Father, bless your word. Meet every need today, God. We all need help in so many areas. Oh, we need physical help, circumstantial help, but we need spiritual help today, emotional help. And please meet the need and, and just open minds and hearts to your precious word now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's Labor Day weekend, and we're not working on Labor Day, right? It's called Labor Day because it pays tribute to the contributions and achievements of American workers. And so a lot has been accomplished by those that were willing to work. And so that's why they call it Labor Day. It's, it is a celebration. You can come up in a trailer and go to the lake. Amen? And have a day off. And so that is a blessing. But spiritually, the Lord said, my son, go work today in my vineyard. We're fellow laborers with Christ. There's a number of verses that talk about how we labor for the Lord, but also how we enter into his rest. And there are a lot of rewards for the work that we do for the Lord. One day we'll receive those rewards. Um, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. And so that's what we're doing now. We're working for the Lord. We want to accomplish something for his glory. And But there are hardships and there are trials. Amen? But it's the help of God that gets us through those things because he has a purpose. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible talks about a body, it's speaking of a local church, and it's talking about some are hands, some are feet, some are eyes, some are ears, but that whole body works together. And uh, he hath put us as it hath pleased him in the body. So we're all in a body, and the church functions like a body. Uh, your body wouldn't function real good if one leg was incapacitated or your arm was broke. So. When the body is functioning together, it is a blessing. And one part of the body helps the other part. Amen? And if you have everything working, it's just, it goes together. Uh, I looked up the word help, and I want to give you the definition. Amen? You probably have your own definition. But it means to lend aid, to contribute strength or means, to assist. Now, we all need help. And we look for help. We look for people to help us. We look for help from God in our circumstances. Help occurs 126 times 
in 117 verses in the Bible. I stayed up last night and counted them all. Uh, actually, there's a book called Strong's Concordance, and that is a real help to study the Bible. And you just look in there, and he tells you how many times it's, it's named. But in Genesis chapter, chapter 2 and verse 18, the first mention of help, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. What a blessing it is, amen, to have a wife. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. She's helpful in that home, amen. And you go to Proverbs 31 and you read about that and she is, she creates a spirit in that home and she's a blessing. Amen, guys? Boy, oh boy, that, that was poor. Amen, isn't that a help, amen? Man, I, well, I'll just leave it there, amen. It's a long ride home, but uh, uh, help me. Genesis 49, 25. The God of thy father speaking to Joseph, who shall help thee? And that's the second mention in the Bible. And it goes all the way through the scripture a number of times it says that. There's an old saying, yesterday he helped me, today he did the same. How long shall this continue forever? Praise his name. So, did God help you today? Do you have hope that he will help you tomorrow? Has he helped you in the past? And do you remember that? Amen? Because he, he's blessed us and we're not to forget those blessings. God comforts us that we might comfort others. God blesses us that we might be a blessing to others. God helps us that we might help others. And the scriptures are full of illustrations of that and stories about that. There is a purpose in God helping us and it's not just self-serving. It's not just for our benefit because as the body works together, it helps the other parts of the body when it's healthy. Um, in 1 Chronicles, Chapter 19 and verse 12. Uh, Joab and Abishai, they're fighting the enemy. They're fighting the Syrians. And this is what one says to the other. And he said, if the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. And it says, but if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. So we're all strong here today, spiritually, amen? But we all still need help. And we look for people to help. We've been comforted. God has comforted us by the scriptures. There's a little ringing in that still, Paul. And, and, but when God comforts us, we're able to help somebody else. Amen? And when we look and we see somebody overwhelmed, help them. What is it? Galatians 6, 1. Brethren, uh, what's the rest of that verse? If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So we are merciful to other people because we want them to be merciful to us. We comfort them because we need comforted by them. And so there's help that we help one another. Sometimes, even though there's a common enemy and a common purpose, there's nobody to help us. There's no help around. Bible says in Isaiah 63, 5, and I looked and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. You're by the side of the road, you got a flat tire, you took the jack out for some reason, and so there's no jack, and you're standing in the, in the rain, and your hair's all right, and you're trying to flag a car down, and they wave to you. They think you're waving to them. And of course, you keep a right spirit about that, right? Oh, well, God bless you. Maybe you have to go get lunch or maybe, you know, you've got relatives. No, you're saying, what a jerk. You know, leave me out here in the rain. But we, we like help. Amen? We like to be helped. But sometimes there's none to help. Psalm 22, 11, Be not far from me, God, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. In 2 Kings... There's a story in chapter six about a famine in the land and there are two women that come to the king and it's, it's really terrible circumstances. I won't go into it, but you can read it maybe when you get home today. But they come to the king and they're wanting something. They're wanting help, they're wanting food. It's a terrible, terrible famine. And this is what the king said to them. He said, if the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I help thee? 
out of the barn floor or out of the wine press. It's a famine. There's no way I can help you. So if God doesn't do it, it's not going to get done. And sometimes that is true in our case. There's nothing anybody can do. Maybe there's people that want to help us, but only God can do some things for us. Amen? And we'll see that as we go through the message. It's a very encouraging message because it'll be a blessing to see these truths. In Psalm 10 and verse 14, about God, he's a helper of the fatherless. And it says in Psalm 27, 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So God does for us what other people can't do for us. You know, my testimony, my dad left when I was eight years old and all of the trouble in our home and all of the family problems. But the Lord has taken up. Those verses mean a lot to me. Um, there's a lot of self-help books. I don't know if you've ever read a self-help book. Uh, they're to help you, help yourself, right? But you know what the first one is, the most popular self-help book is? Anybody know? You want to take a guess? No, it should be. But the, the most... The number one best-selling self-help book is Think and Grow Rich. That's the number one because people are really focused on retirement and having money and ease and all this stuff and buying something else. I mean, that's important, but that should not be the most important thing in our life. I'm with you. The Bible ought to be the number one book for helping us. And so God provides some spiritual answers in there, but he guides our lives, and it's a wonderful thing to have that. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You ever been in trouble? I don't mean with the law. I mean, there's several of you that just got out of, I won't talk about that with visitors here. But uh, uh, we're in trouble. Oh, man, I am troubled. I am frustrated. Oh, boy, I've got family trouble. I've got this trouble. I've got all these troubles. Well, God is a very present help in time of trouble. And have we appropriated that? Have we made that real in our life? Because God says he wants to help. Amen? So this is a good thing. So Isaiah 41.10 Fear thou not, God says, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God says, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be down. What, what time I'm afraid, I will trust in the Lord. All of those Bible principles. And the help of God is there for all of us. He's just waiting to help us. Amen? We have Hosea 13.9. Boy, this is a powerful verse. God says, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. You have messed up your life. You have ruined the nation. You have done this. You have done that. But he, in the same verse, he says, but in me is thine help. As bad as it gets or as bad as you've made it, God is there to restore. Amen. God is there to reconcile. God is there to help us. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. It's, it's not over. We have in times of trouble and weakness, in times of fear, when you would have destroyed yourself, there's the help of God. Some people make him a last resort. He ought to be the first resort, but he is a last resort. The thief on the cross, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Think of the life he lived, the reason he was on the cross, how he mocked the Lord at first, but now he sees, remember me. And the Lord says in his mercy, well, you messed up your life, live with it or die with it. No, he said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. It's such a blessing. It's a blessing as a pastor. I'm sure you've discovered this. It's a blessing when you're dealing with other people and you look at their circumstances and you go, wow, man, that is complicated. Man, that is really bad. But there's always hope in God. Amen? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help, for the help of his countenance, it says in the Psalms. Um, Many times God will use other people to help us. But, uh, and I mean, we had the picnic last week and there are people that helped us carry the tables. That was a blessing, amen? Because you can't carry one by yourself. And when two of us got gassed and we just can't carry anymore, a couple other guys came along, or the, the strong ones, amen? 
like me. No, I was done after one table. But people helped clean up. Many hands make the kitchen smaller. No, that's not it. Uh, too many chickens. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, right? 1 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 6. Jonathan said to his young man that was with him to the armor bearer, we're going to go up. There's about 20 Philistines up there. It's just you and me. It may be that God will save by many. He's able to save by many or by few. Let's go. And they won the victory. And so God can do that. And God used an armor bearer to help Jonathan, but God helped also. But let me just say, as we get into the message today, some battles are so private that there's nobody, flesh and blood, that's going to help. They don't even know. There's things that go on in our homes with our families, in our own heart, that we dare not or don't feel we can share with anybody else. But you can certainly share it with God. And sometimes when you share it with somebody, they read it the wrong way. They misunderstand. Well, that, that's not that bad. And they have no idea how bad it really is in your heart. The hurt, maybe the, the loneliness, maybe the discouragement. But God is always there to help. Isn't that a blessing? You know, there's counselors. Man, they're everywhere. And in this multitude of counselors, there is safety. And that's okay. It's okay to go to a counselor. But you can go to a counselor all your whole life and still not get the new need met because only God can meet that need. What is the help of God? What is the help of God? Obviously, we'll go to the scriptures for answers. But you have to put the scriptures into practice. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving your own self. When we do what God says to do, that's where the help comes from. Uh, what's the help of God? More money. No, that's not the help of God. Uh, better circumstances. We all hope for that. Amen? Driving down the road, you've got to be somewhere, and there's a lot of traffic. And now there's a train. And I said before, you know, you need patience. You're going to wait for that train if you wait patiently or if you wait impatiently. Right? Okay, that's a hit of nerve, so I'll just move on from there. Uh, better health. We're all wanting better health. Right? I want better health. But our health sometimes goes away. Uh, shorter sermons. That would really help a lot. Romans 8, 28, familiar verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things. Remember Jacob, all these things are against me. No, they weren't. They were all working for his good. And so Joseph came back into the fold. Amen. You know the story. Joseph said, you meant it for evil to his brothers, but God meant it for good. All things work together for good. We don't understand how that is, but that's what God says. All things work together for good. You have in 1 Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul, and he's praying. And he's saying, Lord, I've got this thorn in the flesh. Please take it away. He prays three times. And three times the Lord says no. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And so Paul then said, well, I'll glory in mine infirmities. Because when I'm weak, then am I strong, and I have the power of God in my life. So God gave me this thorn in the flesh so that I could see his power in my life and his grace in my life. I think that is such a blessing. Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen so that we can find grace to help us in our time of need. You need help today? It's the throne of grace. It's prayer. Amen? And a lot of times we see the troubles in our life and we look at those troubles and, and some of those troubles are simply caused by a lack of prayer. I believe, therefore have I spoken. So all of these things go together. In Romans 16, 24, well, let me read 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God, Paul says, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
And so we are what we are by the grace of God. It's the grace of God that gives us that strength. Romans chapter 16, 24. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Paul is ending the letter to the Romans. And he writes, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So be it. Amen. We find in the Revelation, last chapter, 22, 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Same words. Inspired by God. Amen. Only these were written by John. No greater instruction or prayer for somebody than that they would experience the grace of God in their life. This is such an important thing. And how do we find that grace? We go to the throne of grace. And we find grace to help in time of need. God wants that for us. Amen? And yet, we may go home today and still with the burden, still with the trouble, no comfort, no patience, no joy. You know, we go to the scriptures, thy words were found and I did eat them and they were the joy and rejoicing of my heart. And, and you know all the verses that I know. Uh, we have Bibles. We can search the scriptures to see whether those things are so. And God uses this book and he uses prayer. Um, there's no greater blessing that can be asked for somebody else than this prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Grace is the free, unmerited love and favor of God. Boy, that's a, that's a great thing. It says favor, goodwill, kindness, favorable influence of God, divine influence or the influence of the Spirit in renewing the heart and restraining from sin. God renews, God creates in us a right, a clean heart and a, he renews a right spirit within us and he gives us the joy of our salvation. This is help. This is how God helps us. Um, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So there's nothing that can top the grace of God. The grace of God is the best thing for that. So if we have destroyed ourselves, sin abounded. Grace did much more abound. There's forgiveness with him. There's, there's help with him. Uh, if you've ever prayed for wisdom, uh, he that lacked wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not. So if you want wisdom, you ask for it. They that ask shall receive. They that seek shall find. They that knock, it shall be opened unto them. Amen? Well, boy, I just, man, I'm just dumber than a box of rocks and I just, I have no idea. Pray. Amen? Pray for something spiritual. So we pray about that. We pray for strength. We want strength and strengthened in the inner man we need his strength we pray for love i want to love god i want to love my neighbor i want to love my enemy and then we pray for grace genesis 12 2 god said to abraham i will bless thee and make thee a blessing there's that purpose again god wants to bless us so we can bless somebody else there's the purpose of help god wants to help us so we can help somebody else yeah, my arm, my arm is so sore I can't use it. We want it to be healed, don't we? Because the other arm has to carry all the load, and it's easier with two arms. And it's just a principle in the Word of God. In 2 Corinthians 1, 4, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those that need the comfort that, we're, that we've uh, received from God. And so we give that same comfort to them. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, how do we do this? How does God comfort you? Will God comfort me? How does he do that? The comfort of the scriptures. We go to the throne of grace to obtain grace to help in time of need, right? That's prayer. And then he comforts us with the comfort of the scriptures. So we go to the Bible. Oh, this is another message on reading the Bible and praying. I get it. You preach on that all the time. That's the theme. That's how we get the help of God. Amen? Well, I wanted something new today. Well, it, it's line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. God gives us these principles over and over. We go to the throne of grace to obtain help, grace to help in time of need. We go to the scriptures to be comforted. 
Amen. And if we neglect the scriptures in prayer, where is the help? Well, I just do it on my own. I'm a man of character. I'm a woman of character. I'm a child of character. Yeah, but there's some things only God can help. He's the only one that can help us with some of these things. It's a blessing to have that in our lives. Ephesians 4.29. And this is where God helps us. And this is now where we help each other. It's the end of the message. But sometimes the end of the message is long. Amen. So pray for grace. Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Minister grace. That's your words, ministering grace unto those that hear you. Let all bitterness, anger, clamor, wrath, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That's 31 and 32, the end of the chapter. But here's the principle. It says there, if I can find it again, um, that, minister, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You know, in Proverbs 18, 21, it says there's life and death and the power of the tongue. You can say things to destroy somebody's spirit, to create anger, to create bitterness, or you could say life. Jesus said in John 6, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And he spoke, this is the word of Almighty God. So if we use the word of Almighty God, this is spirit and this is life. Amen? And the words of grace are so precious. They're all through the scriptures. Um, in John, in, I'm sorry, Colossians 4, 6. Let your, this is instruction. So please take this and take it home so we're not just hearers of the word. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Not seasoned with salt, not always with salt, seasoned with grace. Always with grace. And once in a while, you may reprove, you may rebuke, you may put a little salt in something. It's a preservative, amen, it's a cleansing thing. But our words ought to be gracious words. We have, oh, I'm sorry, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Let me give you that verse again. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man every man seasoned with uh, always with grace always with grace Ecclesiastes 10 12 the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious that's pretty good amen we have Luke 4 22 speaking of Christ and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of out of his mouth if you don't hear gracious words from men. You can always hear gracious words from God. And that's where your comfort comes from. Listen, this book is powerful. Amen? Remember the Mount of Temptation and the devil was tempting the Lord and he kept saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. And then finally the devil leaveth him. And you use the Bible because that's how you fight the devil. The devil is the accuser of the brethren, is he not? That's how the Bible describes him. So he's constantly accusing. Well, you're nothing. What are you trying to do this for? And man, you're a mess. And if people only knew what you were really like, that's why we don't pull the screen down with anybody's life on it. Amen. Because we're all sinners saved by the grace of God. And even though we're saved, we still trip and fall. Amen. But a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. How does he do that? Lord, save me, Peter said. And immediately he took his hand and lifted him. Do you know that kind of help? And sometimes we know it and we don't appropriate it. Amen? And sometimes there's pity that we live in or whatever it is and, and we don't get the help that we need. Men's words can encourage you. Encourage one another. Pray one for another. Be kind one to another. So... Our communication, that's what we preached on last week about fellowship. That fellowship gives us strength and helps us. Amen? That is a blessing. It's encouraging. It's strengthening. But many times that is lacking. 
It's lacking in somebody. But God's words are always there for help. Psalm 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. The faithful fail from among the children of men. Help, Lord. Why are you asking for help? Because the godly man faileth. It's a blessing when you find someone you can have fellowship with. Amen? And our fellowship is with his son and with the father and with one another. It's our fellowship in the gospel. It's a blessing to us. The rest of that psalm, verse 1 says, help, Lord. And then it goes on and it talks about those that speak proud things and those that speak contentious things and how much trouble that is. But then it closes the psalm with the words of the Lord are pure words. And it goes, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. It says, from this generation forever. It goes back to the Bible. Help, Lord. Look at how people talk. And thank God for a Bible. Amen? You still watching the news? Every once in a while I turn it on just to get encouraged. Amen? Uh, maybe I'll hear something in light and bright and encouraging today. And so I turn it on. It's not very long. A couple minutes. And it, you know. And then you get agitated and you get upset. Click. Watch Hallmark. Amen? Or watch cart no, cartoons would be the same thing, right? But anyway, you know what I'm talking about? And so here we are, and what do we hear? What do we hear out there? What do you hear on the job? Uh, is it people praising God and being thankful for the goodness of God? But when you have that with other people, it's very, very, very strengthening. Help, Lord. God is always, always there. This is a true story. I want to read this to you. Mary Ann Bird was born in Brooklyn, New York in August 1928. However, Mary Ann came into the world looking far from normal. She had multiple birth defects, deaf in one ear, cleft palate, disfigured face, crooked nose, and lopsided feet. As difficult as her physical condition was, the psychological pain it caused was far worse. Her classmates teased her mercilessly. Each year, the children had their hearing assessed at the school through a vehicle called the whisper test. The classroom teacher would call each child to the front desk and have the child cover first one ear and then the other. The teacher would then whisper some simple phrase to the child such as, the sky is blue or you have new shoes. To avoid humiliation, Mary Ann always cheated on the test, casually cupping her hand over one good ear so that she could hear what the teacher said. One year, Mary Ann's classroom teacher was Miss Leonard, one of the most beloved and popular teachers in the school. She exuded gentleness and kindness. When the time came for Mary Ann's hearing test, Mary Ann cupped her hand over the good ear as she had done so many times before and strained to hear what Miss Leonard would whisper. I waited for those words, Mary Ann wrote that God must have put into her mouth those seven words that changed my life. Miss Leonard did not say the sky is blue or you have new shoes. She whispered, I wish you were my little girl. Hmm. And those seven positive, powerful words became a watershed moment in Mary Ann Bird's life. In one way, nothing really changed for Mary Ann Bird that day. She remained disfigured and deaf in one ear, and <clears throat> the object of her classmates' painful ridicule. But in another way, everything changed for Mary Ann Bird that day. She began to see that her classmates' judgments were neither the only words about her nor the final words. She started to understand herself as loved and lovable, and dared to envision a future not constrained by her circumstances, but by a future <clears throat> that could transcend them. Indeed, following in the footsteps of the teacher who set her free, Mary Ann Bird herself became an acclaimed teacher known for her compassion and kindness. If love has a face, what will it look like? We can make a fairly accurate guess as to how Mary Ann Bird would answer that question. Love will look like Mrs. Leonard whispering those seven life-changing words. 
That's a wonderful story. Amen. There's not a lot of people around like that. There's a lot of people here like that. Your words are kind. Your words are gracious. Your words are strengthening and helpful. Amen. And that's how we minister to somebody else. God's words are that way to us. The words of God are eternal. Amen. And they give us hope. And we know where we're going to spend eternity because of our faith in the Bible. Amen. But until we get to that promise, absent from the body, present with the Lord, we're living in the nasty now and now. That's the sweet by and by. This is the nasty now and now. And it's good to get around kind, merciful, gracious people because their words are such a blessing. Amen. Do you need help from God? Go to the throne of grace. It says to obtain help in time of need. You need help from God? Search the scriptures. There, there's answers there. There's comfort there. There's help there. You need help from God? Be around gracious people. And you will get some help. Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the help that you give us in this book. It's alive. It's quick. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It's just a blessing. I pray as we read it today, I pray as we read it in the morning tomorrow, or we've memorized it and we quote it, that it would bring comfort to our souls. I pray that as we seek your face, as we want to ask for help, that you'd hear our prayers. And when you help us, God, may you give us mercy and you're gracious to us. May we share that with others. For your glory, we pray this, please. In Jesus' name, amen.